Welcome back to Boston, the Cube's coverage of AWS Reinforce 2022. This is our second live Reinforce. We did two in the middle that were all digital. Aaron Brown is here, he's US AWS Cyber Leader for Deloitte, and Ryan Orsi is the Cloud Foundation Leader for Partners for Amazon Web Services. Gents, welcome to the Cube. Thanks right. for having Good us. Good to Thanks. see you. Tell us about the story of Deloitte in cyber, and then we'll get into Deloitte cyber on AWS, or maybe even start there. Yeah, sure, I mean, obviously Deloitte, one of the largest uh, cyber consultancies in the world. Uh, we've been working with AWS for a very long time. 2013, I was involved with you know, the first um, alliance agreement with them. And then um, we, we've been in cloud managed services about five years, um, delivering workloads for, for clients. We have over 200 uh, clients on that platform. And then about a year and a half ago or so, uh, the MSSP uh, program came and it made a ton of sense to us, right, to really um, level the playing field and, and gave us a chance to really come out and demonstrate you know, our capability uh, around MSSP. The MSSP program, I saw a slide yesterday in oh, the yes. keynotes and in the analyst program, was, you know, there's technology partners, there's MSSP partners. Explain the MSSP partner. Sure, sure, so at uh, the AWS Partner Network, we, we break it down, uh, the, the program is called the Level One MSSP Competency Program, and it is for both those companies that are sort of more of a software company with a managed service, and those that are more of a pure service company, it's for, it's for both. Uh, but it, it's the general concept, it's, it hosts the community of partners like, like Deloitte with a concentrated talent pool around 24 by seven uh, monitoring and response of AWS security events. So what is Deloitte? Deloitte's not a pure software play, it's not a pure services play anymore, it's sort of a, a mixed software. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, asset enabled services, right, is the way that we look at it. So, yeah, we're definitely not trying to compete with, uh, with software companies out there, but we do have assets. Right, so we, we do everything as infrastructure as code, uh, and that allows us to deploy our solutions into client environments really quickly. So where you might spend months on third-party tool integrations, we leverage all native AWS tools in our standard offering, um, and we can deploy into a client and get those services up and running in a couple of weeks. So you sell your software as an integrated service, is that correct? You, you don't no, it's service, it's really yeah, a service. Saying, yeah, we sell a metered service. You don't sell your software separately, but no. you, you I, no. mean, I should say it differently, you include your software as part of the service, is that right? Or yeah, do you... it is, but actually there's, there's another element. There are obviously some clients who don't want to be in a managed service in perpetuity, and so those same assets that I talked about that we use for our MSSP, you know, for the right clients, we, we don't just give away everything to anybody, but for the right clients, for the right engagement, we will work with clients to help them build the capability that they need to run it themselves. And our solution is built in a way where they can do that, right? Our, we have a base component and a variable component to the solution, and we will impart those assets to a client if they, you know, if, if the situation is right. So, okay, so you'll actually transfer the, the software and, and, but you, would you charge for that? Uh, I mean, yeah, you, certainly, but there's obviously a big service component that goes into it, right? So, and that's you know, really where yeah, your, we, your you expertise know, we don't have is. A, we don't have like a, a standard you know, list price, but we'll work with clients um, to, to basically help them build out that capability because frankly, the, the market moves so fast yeah. that you need, you need a constant capability, an engine to, to update that solution. It's not something that you know, you're going to sell and someone's just going to use it that yeah. out of the box for the next five years. But a lot of the value that seems to, that Deloitte brings is you, you don't run from customization, you welcome right. that, you, you know, if, if a client says, hey, I need this special and that special or this compliant or whatever it is, you'll go attack, you have the, the, the staff, the talent to attack that problem and you use software in areas where you can have repeatability and, and it helps you scale and be more productive. Is that a fair way to think about yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, what, I guess one of the phrases that we use is we like big hairy problems, right? Um, that's, that's sort of our, uh, our sweet spot. The, you know, the very simple, hey, I need a couple of guys to do a couple of things. Typically, we're not the right firm for that. Um, so we, we use, yes, we use the assets because we realize like, hey, you know, out of everything that needs to be done, there's a significant portion of this that everybody needs more or less the same way. And then we build that, we build the automation to get it in, and then we have that variable component working with clients to say, hey, let's, let's make this work in your environment. We use a combination of AWS native services, but then you know, some clients have investments in third-party tools, and we can work with that. So it's a perfect match for AWS, because you guys are all about providing tools for builders, and here's some primitives, and some APIs, and, exactly. and go. We don't, we, 
we don't want that highly custom <laughs> customized snowflake for every single client. It, it, exactly, I mean, that's, that's what I feel like the partnership with Deloitte's really bringing to the yeah. table for everybody. Our, our mutual customers and builders out there that, that we both work with is, again, they don't run from complexity or customization. Uh, that, that security can be complex, it, it can be hard. Uh, Deloitte's helping making it much easier. Um, the AWS Partner Network is, is helping kind of bring the ecosystem together and of software, service, architectures that AWS recommend for like a security best practice around what to monitor, how to respond, what kind of enriched data should be added to that security finding and kind of pushing that out through uh, our partnerships with yeah. such as Deloitte. One of the things that I, I mean certainly big takeaway from this event, the security uh, tracks that reinvent yep. previous reinforce events is AWS imparting, not educating its customers on best practice and how to's and things that they should be thinking about, you know, do this, don't do that. In 2019, it was a lot about, hey guys, there's this shared responsibility model and kind of explaining that. We're, we're oh, way, right. way beyond that right, now. Right. Should we think about Deloitte sort of as an extension of that best practice AWS expertise uh, that can be applied at, at your clients? I'll go to Deloitte because yeah. I don't have the talent to, to deal with that. I mean, I, I, I got talented people, but I just don't have enough, enough of them. Of them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's really what you know. What our offering is intended to be comprehensive across all the domains, and like I said, the full life cycle of security operations, all the way from you know identify the issue to to resolve it and, and recover from it. And um, you know, um, when we look at the shared responsibility model, you know, we like to say, hey, we will take you really far up that stack, that, that, that customer responsibility area, you know, um, for, our, for our service, we cover a significant <laughs> portion of that landscape on our, behind, on our client's behalf, because, you know, what, what do they care about? Deploying workloads, getting the application running, right? right? Security is just another one of those important, necessary things, but it's just sort of standing between you and the business value of your workload. And your ideal target customer would be a, 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 a large medium up to a large enterprise, or is it all exclusively large, or? Uh, no, definitely not exclusively large. Um, you know, the, the fact that we have all the automation that we do, we have a significant portion of our uh, security operations uh, folks are offshore, um, allows us to be really competitive. Um, and so we're, we're able to serve clients that maybe you know, in years past wouldn't have been what you'd think of as traditional. So like clients leveraging the marketplace, um, you know, um, we're, you know, we're able to serve that, that market segment. So billion dollar up kind of revenue? Yeah, and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and even south of that a bit. Okay, yeah, so maybe yeah. half a billion up, 500 yeah. million up. Okay, yeah. so thinking about that ideal sort of profile, if you don't know, you don't know, yep. but I'm going to ask you to guess. Yeah. What percent of those target companies, enterprises, have a SOC? Is it 100%, 50%, you know, or are you 75, this? 75 okay. percent, most, okay. most, 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 so, yeah. okay, but so let's say three quarters. Yeah, yeah. Do you, so you complement the SOC, right? You're not the SOC, but you, you may be in some Depending, cases. Depending, it's a, now, now we're talking about it's a function of what their um, IT enterprise landscape looks like. If they're 100% uh, AWS, yeah, if you're a born in the cloud startup and you, know, you don't do anything else, and we have, you know, we have a few of those, right? And they, they want to give us everything. They're like, you know, we're just going to have a, our, our security guy is just going to kind of understand what you guys are doing and, and feel good about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do that. But for the most, it, it, there is an existing SOC, right? And so what we do is we have, um, we, we leverage um, you know, an ITSM uh, software to, to e-bond with, uh, with our clients, service management functions, so that when we're generating changes, they have full visibility to what's going on. We're still resolving things on their behalf, where we are also, we need to communicate with some clients, right, because a lot of security issues that need to get resolved require engagement with the asset owner, so it's not, we're not just a black box. Um, so we do have to talk to folks on the ground at the client to resolve issues. And that's actually one thing that really impressed me, getting to know Aaron and, and his team more and more throughout, throughout this, this journey together uh, in the partnership is, uh, they're not throwing alerts over the fence to the customer SOC team saying, well, here's some recommended remediation right. steps. They're actually rolling up their sleeves and doing yeah. some remediation themselves and informing the customer, yeah. this was taken care of for yeah. you. That's, yeah. I think that's really unique. Yeah. In addition to, you know, our solution obviously has a bunch of 
auto remediation that, you know, right. that we do as part of the solution. So, how, what's the engagement like? Um, what, what's the conversation like when people come to you and say, right. I have a problem, it's blank. Right. The, what are the typical um, you know, a lot of it um, has been uh, organizations where there's either a, a business unit um, that is kind of maybe off running, doing their own thing, and you know, it's only sort of come to light with the uh, compliance and security organization inside the client that like, hey, these guys maybe need some help, and boy, we're really strapped. We don't have the we don't have the people because talent's so tight to go help these guys and make them get it right. We're going to go ahead and keep them kind of off to the side, and you know, we'll we'll do this managed service to help get that addressed. And then uh, um, another typical scenario is um, when um, companies are acquired. Um, so, you know, an organization yeah. buys a company and they've got a pre-existing, they look, again, they look under the covers and they're like, oh, these guys really need some help. Uh, because of the way that we deploy everything as infrastructure as code really very quickly, um, it's a great way to just kind of get it, get it sorted. It's a metered service, so it's not some massive investment that they have to make. We could just get it sorted out until maybe they get they get a chance to process and actually onboard um, that new entity into their enterprise structure. So as part of the, the MSSP program within AWS, you got to be really good at understanding how to utilize the AWS yeah. portfolio of cybersecurity services yep. right, natively. Yep. So you do that. Do you, is that check the box on everything you need, or do clients typically say, no, no, you got to integrate with all this other mess that, that I have there. Can you sweep that mess aside and say, hey, I can do this all in, in, in the cloud, or what's that dynamic the, like? The answer is yes, both, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, typically clients will have significant investments in existing uh, third-party tools, and then either politically because of the investment or from a practical standpoint, it makes sense to, to integrate those. Now, that does slow down the, you know, the deployment and um, the customization a bit, but, you know, and a lot of times that makes, that makes sense for the client. Well, it gets hairy, like you said, you love these yeah. kind of hairy, yeah. hairy problems, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> you run towards it, I guess. That's right, yeah, we, we run, run towards, run towards the fire. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Ryan, your focus on, on partners is all partners, or is it really the MSSPs, or? Uh, all, all partners, all kinds of partners um, in, in the security land space, right? So right, right, yeah, of course. Software companies, professional services, managed services, um, and we're, we're focused on making, trying to make security easier for both of our mutual customers here, right? right? So that what you mentioned about best practices and you know, how, do you, how do you tell what best practices are per AWS service or third party software that's operating in an AWS environment? Uh, that's part of what our, our team does, is we create these, these partner programs, there's a, very detailed, very prescriptive technical checklists that our internal security experts are going through with, with Deloitte folks, for example, as a part of their, their membership in the Level 1 MSSP program uh, to make sure that right, uh, those best practices, which could be fresh off the AWS documentation truck, are uh, built into to their, their services, and the reason those best practices exist is for a, it's for a good reason. Um, they're, they're, they're built, tried, and tested you know, in our own environments um, before they reach, they reach the, the, the documentation website. But all, all of that is, is incorporated into that whole kind of validated checklist that we do together. So it's a great way to, to make sure that operations from partners like Deloitte, software delivered, customization delivered, um, aligns with you know, what we're able to see from just our Amazon culture of being so customer obsessed and, and really listening to all of those very specific uh, challenges they might have that the customer will have at different points in their cloud journey. Those challenges are baked directly into key technical requirement criteria that Deloitte's teamed up with us to go, go achieve. Right. What are you seeing at the macro, Aaron? Uh, when we talk to practitioners, we, we will survey, we have a survey partner called ETR, and they'll do spending surveys. Coming yeah. into the year, uh, CIOs and IT uh, buyers were expecting 8%, 8, 8 to 8.5% budget growth. Post Ukraine, inflation, Fed tightening, you know the tech lash, all that. It's dialed down a bit. Still pretty robust at, at six percent. And security is still remains the number one priority. Yeah. Have you seen? And we've seen a little bit of momentum deceleration in even in security spend across the board. Right. Uh, but but not anything you know tragic. Are you seeing the same, or are you seeing security budgets kind of 
where they were expected to be at the beginning of the year? What yeah, I haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen it decline. I mean, I think <laughs> the fact of the matter is for all the things that we talked about before, right? Basically the, um, the skill shortages mm -hmm. um, and just the coordination with other cloud programs, there's a tremendous backlog of stuff that needs to be done. And, and you know, uh, enterprises are, are, have more appreciation now for the need for all you know all the various right. you know ransomware um, things that have happened and, and and others that hey they need to get a handle on um, on the security in their environment and so it isn't I think a lot of what's been going on in the last year hasn't the, the reason it hasn't been faster hasn't been for a lack of appetite um, it's just been a, a lack of skills and uh, process to do it. It's the business case change and the, and the variables may be the same, but it used to be, hey, if you don't do this, you're exposed, okay? It's the fear of getting you know, infiltrated. And then it's going to become, if you want to quantify it, it's like, okay, what's the expected loss with and without, you know, the yeah. kind of think of insurance terms. Um, is the business case shifting with digital toward, this is a fundamental component of monetization. In order to be able to monetize, you have to ensure this level of security. Are we there yet? Yeah, I think so. I don't think, I don't think anyone's arguing whether it's you know, you know, needed or not, right? So now it's a question of, hey, and, and I think uh, uh, CJ Moses had a good slide in the opening yesterday where he was saying, you know, make the, what was it, make the path, the secure path, the path of least resistance, right? right? And so that's, that's a big part of, um, of you know, how we deliver our solution. We really want to make it easy for the enterprise to absorb the security services that we have, right? Um, that's, and that's really critical. I think that's where the, the focus is, is make it, make it easier to do security uh, because the value comes right along with it. All right, um, I'll give you each the final word. Uh, Ryan, you, you go first, then Aaron. Kind of put a bumper sticker on uh, Reinforce 2022. It's not slowing down, it's only picking up in terms of innovation, software tools, operational processes, and some of the, some of the unique ways that all these tools are tied together, third party, uh, native AWS, consulting. The way, these, the way these services come together, it's only accelerating. Uh, it's been pretty exciting to see some of the innovation here at this, this time at this Reinforce. Right. Aaron yeah, I would agree. I mean, the, just the, the breadth of capabilities um, the, the new announcements uh, by AWS of the capabilities in their solution stack. I mean, for me, it's just, you know, I just kind of wonder like when, when, when does it narrow or when does it, when does it settle down? And it's, I, I know that that's not now. Um, <laughs> Keep waiting. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but um, yeah, I think, um, you know, we will continue to see, you know, just rap, rapid acceleration in, in new features and uh, services that, uh, I often say the, the next decade at Cloud ain't going to be like the last. So gentlemen, thanks for yeah. coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you. Great. Thanks Good for having us. All right. All right, thank you for watching. Keep it right there. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll be back right after this short break from Boston, AWS Reinforce 2022.